What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next, I'm going to go over the top 20 comic books in my collection. But this is special for the month of October. This is the Halloween or Horror Edition. Stay tuned. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I thought this would be a fun video to put together just for the month of October uh, because there's just there's a lot of cool horror or Halloween themed books out there and I think I've got some some cool ones to show and just maybe some books that you don't see every day as well as some of the the ones that you probably are familiar with. Now this is a mix of graded books and ungraded books and these are my my top 20 favorite that that I have. It's not in order of value or anything like that. It is in order of how much I like that book, where it sits on my priority list within uh, my collection of books. And let me know in the comments, what are your favorite horror books that you have in your collection or, or maybe some uh, horror or Halloween themed books that you're hunting after that you're looking to pick up. So I'm gonna get started and we'll start with number 20 and we'll go down to number one. And number 20, uh, this is a graded book and this is Aliens, number one. And I think you just, you have to call this a horror book. I mean, this was a, it's sci-fi, but a sci-fi horror movie. I mean, you can see how scared that guy is on the front cover. And if you've watched some of my videos in the past, uh, this is a book that I have definitely talked about before. The Aliens movie franchise had a big impact on me as a, as a kid. I uh, definitely got to see them a little too young for my age and they just scared the crap out of me for the dark uh, for a, quite a few years. I was always afraid of, of this exact thing happening, an alien coming out of, of some type of like dark corner in the ceiling. And so, I mean, it, it definitely had a, an impact and, and scared me. So. I think I have to call this a, a horror genre book. And this is a really tough one to get in high grade in 9.8. Uh, this is 9.4, which is still a pretty nice grade for this book. Uh, but you can see it's just so much black. Back cover isn't white either, so you don't get that bonus that you usually get with a lot of books, is this green. And so a lot of color rub, a lot of flaws that show up. And in a 9.8, there are only 59 copies out there and they go for over two grand, about 2,500 uh, around the last sales. So very expensive book, but also just a really cool book, especially with Marvel taking back this franchise. All right, so now number 19 and jump into a raw book. And this is Black Cat Comics number 29. And this is a, a witch burning type cover, you know, you've got, but it's a witch actually burning black cat. Uh, you've got these, uh, the skull in the background. You've got just a lot of great Halloween horror type elements with this book. And this one I've talked about before, uh, in, I think in my uh, video about books I'm sending in to get graded. And it's just, it's a beautiful book, but there's just some staining on the back cover and there's even some staining on the front, but it's on the interior and it's just, it's almost impossible to see. Like you really can't even really see it. Uh, but when you open up the book, you can, unfortunately. Um, but this is from Harvey Publications and they have some of the most brutal pre-code horror covers that are out there. Uh, I, I think a lot of people jump to thinking about publishers like EC uh, when they think of horror, but Harvey had some big time horror covers. And so I'll, I'll just, I'll throw a couple of them up here. You've got Black Cat number 50, which is this uh, person with this like radium stick that's basically melting off their face and their hands. You've got Witch's Tales number 25, where you've got this decapitated head that's being used to ring a bell, uh, just a brutal cover. And then Tomb of Terror number 15, which is a guy's face kind of like blown off. And so these are the books that were really near the end of that pre-code era. It got, this was basically largely books that are responsible for establishment of the Comic Code Authority because they are just so violent, so brutal, and uh, they had a, a big impact on the future of comics with the establishment of that Comic Code Authority. So Harvey played a very big role in that. All right, so then let's go to number 18. And so number 18, this is a, a little bit more modern book. This is from the from the Bronze Age. And this is Ghost Rider number two. 
And I think Ghost Rider fits well into the, the horror or Halloween genre. I mean, you've got got a devil on the cover. I mean, Ghost Rider is a skull and, you know, on his, on his own, basically. And this is the first appearance of Damon Hellstrom, or the, uh, the Son of Satan. And I just, I really like this book in the high grade. So it's a 9.6 white pages, it's a very nice copy. Uh, but that blue just looks awesome and really high grade, no creases or anything, just an incredible looking, uh, looking book. And so it's just one of these books that I think when you get them in high grade, they look a little different than the kind of like mid or lower grade copies. They just, they really pop, they look, they look really cool. So uh, definitely a, a big fan of, of this book as well. All right, so then let's go to number 17. And this is the first of uh, a few L.B. Cole books that are on this list. And if you're a, a regular watcher of my channel, you know I've talked about L.B. Cole quite a few times. Uh, he did a lot of pre-code type covers, uh, especially in the sci-fi, uh, horror genre, as well as romance covers, that kind of thing. Uh, but this is Blue Bolt number 110. And this one you'd call kind of like a, a sci-fi horror cover because you've got this big monster on the cover that is definitely going to get those guys. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but they're in space. You know, you've got this really cool space landscape with all these bright planets and, uh, you know, the bright spaceship you've got right down here and then just all this, this fun stuff down on the bottom here. And this is, I mean, it's just, it's a beautiful book. I, I really like these L.D. Cole books. They are, they are pretty rare. There are only 30 of these on the CGC census. And for a book from 1951, I mean, the colors are just, just incredible. And that's one of the things, if you're not familiar with L.B. Cole, this is what he is really known for. It's books like this, books that have these really incredible color schemes that just pop, uh, that catch your eye. And so there are a couple artists that might trick you sometimes that you'll think it's L.B. Cole, but usually if you see a book that looks like this, has this kind of feel, it's L.B. Cole. And you can, you can usually pick them out of a crowd and they just have this really incredible contrasting color look to them. Um, but like I said, there's, there's a few I'll be cold books on my list because he had some, some really awesome pre-code horror, you know, Halloween theme type books. All right, so now number 16, we are jumping back into a raw book and this is the first EC book that I've got on this list. And this is Tales from the Crypt, number 46. And this is a pretty tough book to come across. Uh, the reason is that this is the last book in the Tales from the Crypt run. And so if you look in Overstreet, that kind of thing, it'll say it has basically like a low print run, tough to find because it's that last book in the run. And it's just a, a really cool werewolf cover. And it's, it's also one that is very tough to get in high grade. And that's actually kind of unusual for EC uh, because with EC, there are a lot of what are called file copies. And so it's, either like the, the publisher or artists or whatever, keeping copies of those books. And so with EC, you will almost always find nine, eight copies of almost every single one of the books in their, in their titles. Uh, it's just, there happens to be just one or two of these nine eights, sometimes even nine nines that are out there. But this one's different. This one, the highest grade is a nine four, which is still obviously very high, but it's a little unusual for EC. But this is a you know a tougher book to come by. It's by Jack Davis. So you can see that's his uh, his signature, like, like a little mark down there. And so he did a lot of great pre-code horror type covers, and you can you can pick him out with that that signature on there. So it's pretty clear which ones are done by him. All right, so let's go to number fifteen, and we're sticking with EC. This is another tough book to come by. This is Haunt of Fear, number 15. And I didn't put this one at 15 on purpose. It's just a, a coincidence that this ended up here. And even though this is number 15, this is actually issue number one of this run. And so you'll see that with books in the golden age a lot of the time where they will just shift titles partway through runs or they'll start at numbers that aren't actually number one. And in this case, this book used to be called Gunfighter before this. So it was, the title was Gunfighter. Then they changed it to Haunt of Fear at issue 15. And so just a, you know, it's a, got lots of skulls on the cover. You've got what looks like maybe is like a, a vampire coming out of a coffin and just a creepy cool cover. And like I said, first issue of this run. So a relatively tough one to come by. Now in that last, that last issue, I said it was Jack Davis. 
Uh, so this one's Johnny Craig, and so he actually signed in a very similar way down here, but you can see that's what Johnny Craig's signature looked like compared to this one here, uh, which is Jack Davis. So uh, both, both of them a lot of times did that circle in the corner, um, but this one is for Johnny Craig, and he did a lot of pre-code horror covers as well. Definitely another one of the artists that was very responsible for the establishment of the Comics Code Authority. He had some very impactful covers that he created uh, that definitely showed up on the, the Seduction of the Innocent or SOTI report. All right, so now for number 14. And this is a book I showed in a recent unboxing. I was real happy to be able to pick up a copy of this, especially one that looks uh, presents as well as this one does. And this is Tales from the Crypt number 33. And this is another Jack Davis cover. You can see there's his signature down on the bottom. And the reason that this book is important is that this is the origin of the Crypt Keeper. So the Crypt Keeper uh, looks a little bit different here than what you're probably, so this is Crypt Keeper here. Uh, if you're thinking of the television show, it was basically like a zombified or you know skeleton type character. Uh, definitely not the case uh, in the Tales from the Crypt run. Uh, looks a little different here, but this Jack Davis cover, I mean, it's just, there's so much detail on it. I think it's just an incredible cover. Lots of detail on the mummy and this, you know, two-headed creature on the back here. Just a, a really cool cover. And it's one of the books that you've got one of the few, what I'd call, keys in these runs. Because being the origin of the Crypt Keeper, you know, I'd call that a, that a key or minor key for horror books. And it's a relatively more common book on the census. Just And I think part of that is because... Uh, it is considered that, that type of key. There are 172 on the census, and there are two at 9-8. And so that's what I'm talking about here, where you've got these books that do show up in extremely high grade because of those file copies that exist out there. All right. Now, number 13. And just one more EC here. This is Haunt of Fear again, but this is issue 17. And again, we've got a uh, Johnny Craig cover. And the reason this book is important, so this is another like key issue, that this is the origin of the Crypt of Terror, the Vault of Horror, and the Haunt of Fear. And so you can see you know, them on the cover there. And just another, again, creepy cool cover. You've got skulls, you've got the, the old witch, you've got the Crypt Keeper, you've got kind of a lot of these, these great characters from EC in here. This is one where, again, it's just, it's such a hard book to come by. It's such a, a rare book that, whether it's restored or qualified, that kind of thing. This is the type of book that, that I'll make an exception for. Uh, and so it, it is a book that I, <laughs> that I made an exception for to be able to pick up uh, this copy. All right, so now for number 12, and this is another really cool LB Cole cover. Uh, this is Blue Bolt number 114. And this one is, is horror all the way. I mean, you've got this underwater zombie. You've got these like, fish that even have big teeth on them ready to get you. <laughs> You've got this other guy buried in the sand down here. And one of the cool things is I had never noticed this until I actually had a copy of this book in hand. I, I never noticed the shark in the background. I think that that shark looks looks really cool in the background there as well. And I never even noticed it was there. It just kind of felt like background when I used to see this, this book. But when I got in hand, I was like, oh, that's a cool little extra thing there. But really cool color scheme with this one. Uh, a lot darker than what than what was on that other Blue Bolt cover, but a lot, you know, kind of like darker horror type feeling with this, with these dark greens and everything like that. So cool book, another LB Cole book. And again, a book that there's not a lot of copies of them out there, at least graded. There are 59 copies on the census. So just another one of these great books from the, the Blue Bolt run. There are there's some cool ones in there. I definitely recommend uh, checking those out if you're, you're interested in any of the horror type books. There's a lot of great books in that Blue Bolt run. All right, so now I'm at number 11. And from this point forward, these ones are all books that are actually on my, what I call my not for sale list. And I've talked about that in previous videos. And people have asked, uh, you know, they're like, which books are the ones that, that you keep that are on that, uh, that list of 50 books that I, I don't sell. And the ones that are here, uh, the 11 moving forward are, are all on that list. And it doesn't mean that they stay there forever, but they, uh, they're the ones that are holding those positions for now until they get, they get replaced. And so for number 11, I actually have two copies of this book. Uh, the one that's the better copy is the one that, that's on my, my uh, keepers list right now. 
and this is Ghost Comics number six. And Ghost Comics is just an, an awesome run of horror and good girl art type cover books, uh, pre-code books. And a lot of them are done by Maurice Whitman, including this cover. Uh, Maurice Whitman did a lot of great covers back in the golden age. And so this is uh, one of the copies that I have. And then the second copy I have is this uh, raw one here that I do plan on getting graded. I don't think it's much better than this one, but a little better because it's still got this chip out of the corner there. But in general, it's a cleaner looking copy. And so probably somewhere around a 2.5. Uh, I'd be great if it got a little better, but I think 2.5 is probably about where it's at. But cool book, uh, Ghost Comics, another run that I recommend checking out if you uh, aren't familiar with it. There are a bunch of great covers from this run if you're interested in horror covers or good girl art type covers. Uh, so uh, this one, again, not a lot of them out there. There are 53 universal copies on the census, soon to be 54 once I send this one in. Um, the other funny thing about this is uh, my... Uh, friend Jake, who also has the podcast, the Spectales podcast that I've talked about and goes by Omega Red, uh, which is Omega underscore Reed on Instagram. He calls these Kool-Aid Man covers uh, because you've got the guy busting in through the back to, to save uh, to save the, the person or the woman. And so I think that's pretty funny. I like, call, I, I like that. I like calling them Kool-Aid Man covers. So. so that is number 11. All right. So now for number 10, this is another book from the ghost comics run this is ghost comics number two and this is probably the second most in demand book from this run the ghost comics six i would say is probably the, the most in demand most expensive book from the run this is probably the second one really close with issue number one but again you got this creepy guy in the background controlling uh controlling her with these strings and this one has this, you know, this lingerie cover again, good girl art type cover, and this is Maurice Whitman as well. Again, so you can see a Maurice Whitman cover, and just great cover. I I, I really like the books from this run. I've, I've got a few of them, and uh, two and six are definitely my favorites. The the ones that end up on my keepers type lists from this run. So super happy to to have copy of this, and I've actually purchased another one recently that should be showing up soon, um, but. Uh, but yeah, Ghost Comics is a great run of books. Definitely recommend checking those out. All right, so for number nine, jumping back to EC, and this is my favorite cover from the Tales from the Crypt run. And this is Tales from the Crypt number 28. And this is just, it's such a cool cover with this guy that, that's been buried alive. He's He shows up in a few of the Tales from the Crypt covers and he just, you know, seems to be having a pretty bad day here. But uh, I don't remember if he shows up in any issues after this, so I don't know if he actually gets out of here. Um, but just another great Tales from the Crypt cover. And I really like this. I've had a copy of this one before, like a 1.8 uh, that was graded. This one is definitely cleaner and, and you know, nicer looking book. There is some tape uh, along where those little tears are. Uh, they're a little tough it's tough to see through the mylar but there's there's two pieces of tape one where you can see that little bit of discoloration there you can see a little better now so those two pieces of tape on the cover but in general a, a really nice presenting copy it's unfortunate because that tape isn't really necessary it is preventing that tear from getting any bigger um, but it's not like it's keeping on the cover or keeping a piece attached or anything but uh, but yeah EC has a bunch of that's too bad, you can't see him there. So <laughs> EC has a bunch of great titles, like, like horror type titles, um, but this is one of my favorite covers from, from EC. All right, now number eight. This, I, I, I do, I really like this book. This is a, it's the only book I have on here that's a signature series book. And this is Marvel Spotlight number five. Because if I had Ghost Rider number two, I've got to have Marvel Spotlight number five on here. First appearance of Ghost Rider and signed by Roy Thomas. And this is just, it's such a tough book to get in high grade. So this is like a nice mid-grade copy, nice presenting mid-grade copy is, is always nice to have because it gets so expensive so fast. And I figure Ghost Rider's part of the League of Monsters, so he, he belongs in the, you know, the list of horror books, the, the list of Halloween type books. And this is definitely one of the most popular Bronze Age books that's out there. Just tons of demand for first appearance of Ghost Rider. And also, technically, I'd say it's the most expensive Bronze Age book that's out there. Uh, not necessarily when you get down into kind of the lower or mid grades, 
but in high grade in a 9.8 there are only four and one sold in june for two hundred and sixty four thousand dollars that crushes what a 98 hulk 181 sells for the 98 hulk 181 that recently sold was around eighty thousand it was like eighty seven thousand so this is triple <laughs> what that 98 hulk sells for because there are so few of them in that high grade and so that's where it's not always just the demand for the character it's also the scarcity and so that's a case where that that low census count for that book and those high grades really drove up the price for that book now the question is if another one came up for sale would it hit a number anything like that i don't know uh, it could be that there were just two people bidding back and forth and one of them now has their copy and so the other one that wants it maybe they get a lot cheaper uh, but that's another question where you never know if that person that paid all that money for that book maybe they would bid up the other one too just to try to protect their investment but there's a risk in that because they could end up with a second copy and now they've got two copies that they paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for so never really know but First Appearance of Ghost Rider, great horror book, uh, especially from the, the Bronze Age. All right, now, and, and this is, I guess this is obvious because these are in my, my top 10, but this is one of my favorite covers. For number seven on the list, this is Witchcraft number two, and this is one of my favorite skull covers just of all time. I love this cover. It's got this cool black skull because a lot of times the skulls are, are white on these covers. And this one has this different, really menacing look with the skull and crossbones, kind of has like a pirate feel to it. Got this really, you know, bright yellow background that makes that skull pop. And then also I just, I really like how witchcraft is is colored. How you've got this pink to purple fading in the in the name. I just, re I really like the way this one looks. I think it's, it's a, it's a, cool cover and just one of the best skull covers in my opinion from the golden age now this is from avon they did have quite a few pre-code horror books so definitely a another publisher to go and consider checking out it is a pretty rare book only 35 on the census and so it's not one that you're going to come across all that often now the reason i like showing books like this is because i feel like it's books that maybe a lot of people don't see all that often and you don't really know if it's a book you want or a book you'd like to collect if you don't know it's out there and so that's why i like doing these videos because that's what caused me to end up actually picking up this book was that i saw somebody on instagram that i follow and they were posting some horror books i don't know maybe eight months ago or a year ago something like that and one of the books they posted was this one and i was like that is an awesome cover that is a cover i, I want to try to find that book and relatively soon after that one just happened to come up in an auction and i ended up picking it up and so that's why i like showing these because if other people might see them find that they're interesting and, and start trying to search out these books as well all right so for number six this is another book that i just showed in an unboxing video this is Vampirella number one and another book that I've got two copies of if you watched my uh, my video and so this one here was my original copy that I had and uh, that I picked up I don't know a while ago just because I, I wanted to have a copy because the the prices had been going up and up and up and so I decided I wanted to get just a copy of that book so I at least had something that was also moving up with those prices and I could try to pick up another copy later then I once I do I can you know sell this book and so this was the one that i just picked up uh, which is definitely a nicer copy you can see this one here has that chip out of the side and a little chip in the corner just in general more wear on the book um, whereas this one doesn't have any of that that chipping you know it's got a little fold in the corner here um, so it's a color breaking crease obviously down there but it can be straightened out but the thing that I, I really like about this one is that date stamp, July 21st, 1969, uh, which the cool thing somebody pointed out on the video when I did this unboxing was that that's one day after the moon landing and it's, you know, there's a stamp on the moon. So I think that's, that's pretty awesome. I think that's a nice, cool little thing too. Um, but Vampirella number one, it's the first appearance of Vampirella. It's a Frank Frazetta cover. It's just an extremely in-demand book. And like I mentioned in that prior video, it's a book that seems like every time the book sells it sells for more and so it's one of those books where 
it was tough for me to try to, to get a better copy because I always put these restrictions on myself on how much I'll pay for books. And so finally, I just, I went for it for this one and I talked about it in that video. And the reason I, I picked this one up is that it was graded as a five, a VG fine um, on Heritage, who I picked it up from, but I thought it looked nicer than a VG fine. I thought it looked like it could be a five, five or a six. And so I, I decided I would go for that with the possibility that it would actually grade a little bit higher. Um, but just awesome book and obviously a character that ties well with Halloween and one of the more popular horror type characters today. And so really happy with this book, you know, just a, a cool book to have in the collection. All right, now into the top five and these are, uh, these are all books that it would be very difficult for me to, to let go of these. It would likely be a scenario where it would need to be a better copy that I got, you know, something that I would end up swapping it out for, for a nicer copy of that book. So the first one here, number five, is Suspense Comics number eight. And this again, this is L.B. Cole. This is 1945. This is getting early, especially for horror type covers like this, where you've got this you know, this creepy spider with the, the human skull. He's got these two people trapped in his, you know, in his web. And then you've got uh, this, you know, this is this creepy guy in the background. He's called Mr. Nobody. Um, but he's in, a, he's in a number of covers. He's in this run. Um, but just a, a really cool, again, L.B. Cole cover. And you can tell this is a little earlier in uh, L.B. Cole's work. You know, this, the colors aren't quite as, as contrasting and vibrant in these earlier ones, but it still has that feel of L.B. Cole. And he, he uses this spider character again later on where he, he ups the, the horror and terror factor with, uh, with this character a bit. But yeah, 1945, 1.8, you know, so it's a lower grade, but I like trying to get books that present well for their grade. And I feel like this one presents well for its grade. Uh, this one did have a book from the Promise Collection that was in a 9.2, sold for $60,000 earlier this year, and it's the highest graded copy by a mile. I think the next one is like a 7.5. So these are these are definitely tough books to get in any grade, uh, and especially uh, higher grade copies. But very happy with with this book. All right now, the next one, number four. This is actually from the Bronze Age. And again, one of my favorite covers, this is House of Secrets, number 92. And this is the first appearance of Swamp Thing. It's this Bernie Wrightson cover where it's just, I, I just, I love this cover. It's, it's got that, it's really cool, like static look to it. Kind of like you're watching it through some, some fuzzy TV screen. I just, I really like the look of this cover. It's got that definite horror feel to it. Even though Swamp Thing is generally considered a, a hero now, uh, he was part of a horror storyline at, at this point. And so just one of the most, I think, in demand, especially uh, niche type characters from DC. And I've talked about this one before as well because this, this book is absolutely beautiful for a 7.0. I mean, you can see up here, that there's this little uh, crease in the corner there, but in general, just an amazing copy of this book. Almost, almost no damage on the spine, almost no damage on the bottom or the edges or the corners. This is one that I, I would have said would probably grade about an 8.5 uh, because of that, that crease up there and just a little bit of damage on the spine. However, on the back, it has a lot of tanning. You can see the tanning is there on the front too. It's just kind of hidden, uh, so you don't notice it as well. You see it just as the transition in this white here, but on the back, it's extremely obvious. And so this was one that I used in a video a while ago where I was going over the impacts of certain types of flaws on grades, like tanning. And this is one where that, that tanning has a significant impact on the grade, probably knocks it down about a grade and a half. And so just something to be aware of as well when you're, when you're looking at books that it's, it's not that you got screwed on your grade or something like that. It's like, yeah, it's a beautiful book, but this is another type of flaw that, that will impact your grade that isn't your traditional type of damage, you know, like just like folds and spine ticks, that kind of thing. So it's something to always be aware of if you're uh, if you're grading your books or, you know, sending them in to CGC to get graded. All right. Now, number three, these top three, I, I could have put them in just about any order. I, I just, I love all these books. This is where it's really tough to, to order books like this in terms of your favorite, because 
they're they're just they're all up there, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, this one, I, I wouldn't really classify it as horror, but because of the the character that's on the cover, I said I'm going to include this, you know, as a Halloween type type uh, cover. And so this is Suspense Comics number eleven, and this is another LB Cole book. You've got this awesome devil cover. Now this one. This one feels like LB Cole. You know, these bright contrasting colors, this reds, the yellows, the greens, and just, you know, I, I just, I love this. The, the people fighting over money, the devil just sprinkling money over them. And he uses this devil character in a few different books. Uh, the other most famous one is Mask Comics number two. Well, I'll maybe throw a picture of that one up there if I remember to do that. Um, but just some incredible covers from him. And this is another example of type of books I like to get where they're low grade, you know, it's a 1.8. Uh, because this is an extremely expensive book, especially when you get up into mid and high grades. Uh, but the back has some, you know, a big piece missing here. It has a piece missing down here. It has, you know, the guy smoking a cigarette or a joint or something like that on the back here that somebody drew on. Uh, so the damage is largely, you know, relegated to the back cover. And that's what I like to look for, for with these books. And so just one of my favorite books overall in my entire collection absolutely love this book and there are only 64 universal copies on the census and there was a 9.8 from the promise collection that sold last month for hundred and thirty two thousand dollars so uh, definitely a pricey book especially as you get up into those those high grades all right now for the top two so number two this one this is a Johnny Craig cover, and this is one of the covers that, that they say was very uh, involved in the responsibility of the establishment of the Comics Code Authority. This is a pretty brutal cover. Uh, mine is a lower grade copy, but it's one of those books. Take what you can get. And this is Crime Suspense Stories number 22. And you, you can see this is all supposed to be red up here, so it has all this discoloration, but honestly, I kind of like the way it looks. I think, you know, when I look at these, when the ones that are all red versus the one that has this discoloration with the yellow, I kind of like the yellow. I think it makes it look really cool. It's also got that, you know, down on the ax as well. Um, but obviously, I mean, just a brutal decapitation cover. Uh, this is one that's actually a little more common. It sells pretty regularly, like largely because there's just so much demand for this book because it is one of the most famous pre-code horror books uh, that is out there. And like I said, I've kind of described this as one of the books that broke the camel's back for the Comics Code Authority. The book is from 1954, right before that authority was established. And there are 296 copies on the census, which is a lot for a Golden Age book. Uh, in, includes one 9.8, but that one's never come up for sale, so I have no idea what that book would end up selling for. But this is one that I, I'm always on a lookout trying to upgrade, but it's so tough to find this book for like a deal. I'm always looking for a deal. And so I, I'm, I'm happy with having this copy uh, as it stands, but I mean, yeah, just, just a brutal cover. Cause I mean, they've even, you can see they've got her eyes open, you know, rolled back and everything. The, drool or whatever coming out of her mouth. I mean, it's it's a brutal cover. Now, one thing I've talked about with some people that just kind of like joked about, it, it's like, oh, it's, you know, I mean, look, like her, her blood is black. Like he's, he was killing a demon or something, you know, he was doing, he was helping. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't murdering someone. And so it's, it shouldn't be considered that bad of a cover, but you know, obviously it's a, it is a brutal cover. One of the more brutal covers from the golden age. All right, now number one, and this is, like I said, the, the, those top three, they, I, could, I could interchange almost in any way with, with these top three, but this is the one I decided to put at number one. It's LB Cole again, and this is Startling Terror Tales number 11. And if you recognize that character there, that is the same spider character with the uh, human skull head from the Suspense Comics number eight. But, but this is about seven years later and LB Cole, he reused some of his themes from those early books and just really upped the kind of creep and violence factor later on, so 1952. You can see that here, you've got these, these heads that are in the web, you've got these people that are captured there, but just the center of this one is now the spider, you know, this big drawing of this creepy spider. And this is another one that, that ended up having these reds have this discoloration here, um, but 
still, I, I think this one just, it's such a cool cover. LB Cole, again, these, these bright contrasting colors, just indicative of LB Cole's style. And you've even got, like, I like his signature. His signature always looks really sharp. It's like a calligraphy type signature. Um, so uh, that you'll, you'll sometimes see him sign. He, he usually signs, but not always. Um, but I always like it when you get his signature on these covers. But to me, just, you know, a really cool horror book. One of the creepiest covers um, that, that L.B. Cole did. And again, just one of those books, I'm, I'm happy to just have a copy. You know, I realize it's 1.8, it's a lower grade, but it doesn't have any big pieces missing out of the front cover or anything like that. And that's really what I'm looking for. And this is one where there are 86 copies on the census, but that doesn't seem like very much to me, especially considering the demand for, for this book being one of those kind of real big Hallmark key horror covers from the Golden Age. Uh, so they don't stick around long when they, <laughs> they pop up for sale. Um, but again, another book that, yeah, I'm always on the lookout to try to upgrade the copy, but they, they don't show up very often. So I am happy with just having one in the collection. All right, so I hope you saw some cool books, some some fun books, books that maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, these are the top 20 horror books from my collection. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here. If you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.